We heard it today in our reading from Romans. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you on this Reformation Saturday night and from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And everyone said? Amen. We're still awake, right? <laughs> it's getting dark. But the light of day shone upon Martin Luther and henceforth uh, on the Christian church uh, 500 years ago, 503 to be exact, on Halloween. Um, Luther changed, really, the world. He changed the church, and people are still talking about him you know, 500 plus years later. God used him in a miraculous way. It's Reformation weekend, and Halloween is actually next weekend, right? Isn't that next Saturday, I think? Okay. Anybody uh, plan on dressing up like Martin Luther? <laughs> Gee, I'm looking forward to seeing that outfit, that costume. That could be a little scary. Now, I doubt if any of our kids uh, have thought about dressing up like Luther, uh, but maybe some of us grown-ups have. You know, on oldlutheran.com, uh, they once had this posted. You know you're too old to trick-or-treat when you get winded from knocking on the door. You forget why you're knocking on the door. <laughs> you ask for high fiber candy only. <laughs> you have to have another kid chew your candy for you. When someone drops a candy in your bag, you lose your balance. You're the only Spider-Man with a walker. You have to keep going home to use the restroom. <laughs> Why do we get old? It's because sin happens. I once saw a, common, a comic strip of a preacher uh, with the bumper sticker on the front of his car that read, Sin Happens. You're probably thinking another bumper sticker in your mind right now. That's okay. All of us can relate to that. Well, I sure hope that the preacher also had a sticker on the back of his car and even larger letters that read, Grace happens. How about that for Reformation and that reminder? And we all need to be reminded of that because basically that was the message of the 16th century Reformation. Sin happens, but even more importantly, Grace happens. And Luther, I mean, he tried to do all kinds of things to himself to make himself right with God. All he saw was an angry God, a wrathful God, a vengeful God, a God that he could not please. Until reading the New Testament epistles and also looking back on that little minor prophet guy named Habakkuk who said hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the just will live by faith. And I believe it was the book of Galatians. It's like the scales fell off Luther's eyes and it was like he was reborn and reconverted again and he finally understood that there was nothing that he could do to please God or make himself right with God, but that Jesus had done it all for him. I want you to help me remember that today on this Reformation Sunday, I want you to penetrate in the depths of your heart and soul the message that I'm going to bring to you. So during the sermon, so you guys will stay awake on me tonight, whenever I raise my arm like this, I want you to say, grace happens, okay? okay. Let's try it. Pastor B may preach a long-winded sermon tonight, and I might take a really good nap before I go home and go to bed for good, but it doesn't matter because we're a congregation that understands that when he messes up and he asks for forgiveness, way to go, and I appreciate that. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I want this Reformation Saturday night word from God to make a difference in your walk with him. That's right, we can actually walk out of here thinking differently, behaving differently, and living guilt-free lives because of Jesus. I wanted to bring healing into relationships that you might have, like your marriage or other relationships. I want this message to speak to you today, I'd like to say, in a way that really no other one has. By the power of God, I want you to walk out of here tonight and understand that in your own life, that when sin happens, grace happens. No matter if you feel worthless or embarrassed, no matter if you've been, like, molested or raped. No matter if you have had an abortion or committed a homicide. No matter if you're an alcoholic. 
a narcotic or prescription drug addict, an adulterer, a cheater, a liar, a gossiper, a racist, a slanderer, a deceiver, a manipulator, or a bragger. Whether you're stubborn, arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, jealous, have fits of rage, selfish ambitions, stir up dissensions, even if you're filled with hate, filled with envy, or evil thoughts, or going through a divorce, or participating in a same-sex relationship, I'm here to tell you tonight, brothers and sisters, that when sin happens... To those who repent of their sins and place their trust in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul writes in our text, verse 23, There is no difference, for all have sinned. And I mean, everybody who has ever lived. There's only one person who lived who never sinned. And his name was Jesus. Right. And the Bible goes on to say in that verse, All of us are justified freely by his grace that came through the redemption of Jesus Christ. So by grace, which means God's undeserved love and favor, you and I have been saved through faith, through believing in Jesus, that he lived a perfect life for us, that he died for our sins and rose again. And this is not from us. The Bible says that it's a gift from God. The righteousness, it says in Romans, is from God and not from us, so that no one can boast as if it were a good work. You know, justified is kind of a big word, isn't it? Anybody know what justified really means? It's actually a legal term, which means that you are declared not guilty. It's simply explained by remembering the words, it's just as if I had no sin. Have you ever heard it put that way before? Can you say it with me? It's just as if I had no sin. Paul also wrote to the Romans that this righteousness from God uh, results in justification, results in righteousness. What is righteousness? It's kind of the, you know, you're, you're right with God. The rightness that Jesus had through his perfect life, that rightness or righteousness was given to most of us in the waters of our baptism, when the water and word were poured onto us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And many of us have been clothed with the righteousness, the rightness of Jesus since the day we were baptized. This righteousness, again, doesn't come from us or anything we do. The righteousness is completely from God as a gift. God's provided you and me the Holy Scriptures, which reveals Jesus Christ. We read the Scriptures, we hear the Scriptures, we meditate on the Scriptures, and we talk with one another about the Scriptures so that we grow in grace and in saving faith. Now, i got to tell you, sometimes I'm really good at this, and sometimes I'm really not when it comes to applying the grace of God to my own sinful life. Sometimes I, I feel like, hey, you know, I really get it. I understand that not a, one of my sins, and I've got plenty of sins. I'm a big-time sinner, you know. Not every one of my evil thoughts, lustful thoughts, everything that I've ever said or done that was sinful, that that's actually forgiven. And a part of me just kind of want to say, you got to be kidding me. That one is actually forgiven too? Yes, it is. And I've got to constantly remind myself of the grace and the love that God has for me only because of Jesus Christ. You know, there's, there's this thing called law, gospel, Luther. He was a, a brilliant guy. You know, he was a, a great scholar. He was a, a theologian. He was a musician. And he's the one that came up with the whole idea of interpreting the Bible with law and gospel eyeglasses. And he said, to really appreciate the law and gospel, you've got to keep them completely distinct from another. You can't mingle the law and the gospel because the law accuses us. The law SOS, it shows us our sin. It shows us the wrath and the anger of God. It shows us where we fall short. Amen? Amen. But the gospel shows us the love of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. The gospel SOS shows us our Savior. They're two totally different teachings. One shows us our sin, and the other shows us our Savior. And where Christians get it wrong is they, they mingle these two teachings, and they distort what Jesus has done for us. It's as if we're saying, you know, what Jesus did on the cross wasn't good enough. There's still something I have to do to make myself right with God. The buck really didn't stop with Jesus. The buck still kind of stops with me on whether or not I'm living a good life. I'm going to church. I'm giving money. I'm treating my neighbor well. I'm being a generous individual. Am I really walking the talk? 
Am I loving God and am I loving my neighbor? Now, whenever the Bible tells you to do something, whether it's love God or love neighbor, that's not gospel, that's law, because I can't love God perfectly. I can't love my neighbor perfectly. It shows me my sin. But the gospel shows me that one who has walked the talk for me, one who has lived the perfect life that I couldn't live, who had perfect thoughts, who had perfect behavior and perfect actions, and his perfection has become my perfection by grace through faith in Jesus. Amen. See how it works? And Luther finally understood that. But a lot of Christians today don't. They still think, oh, I gotta live a good life. Oh, I said a cuss word, that's gonna, get, that's gonna keep me out of heaven. Or, or I lusted, or, or I committed adultery, or I killed somebody. Uh, I was talking to some guy today, uh, I worked out with him, noticed uh, I had met him before, and uh, after I left the gym, saw that he was walking, on, walking along East Charleston, pull up alongside him and said, hey man, you need a ride? He saw that you know I had worked out with him. He said, hey, I'm going up to Decatur in Charleston. I said, no problem, I got a Prius. Hop in. So he hopped in and said, uh, you know, I've been off heroin for 40 days. Okay. Uh, I've done some time in prison. I recently got a DUI and I got a list of felonies as well. But he said, I'm on a good track. I'm in a halfway house. I'm working out. And he said, well, where's your church again? And we talked about the grace of God. Isn't that amazing? that the, the forgiveness of God covers up all of our junk, all of our stuff. And that was the great discovery of the Reformation. And we don't want it just to be head knowledge, folks. What we want it to do is get in here, get pushed down from the head down to the heart so that we really believe it, that because I believe in Jesus, every one of my sins is forgiven, amen? Inspired by the Spirit, this was the great discovery Luther had made. It was the, the great revelation that would change the course of Christianity and world history. The just shall live by faith. And what, what Luther had uncovered, a biblical truth that was really concealed for centuries. People were in despair, thinking their sins were going to be held against them, that they had not lived a good enough life. They didn't know if they were right with God or when they took their last breath, if they were going to be with Jesus in heaven. Luther finally realized that God is not an all-terrible, but rather an all-merciful God. He's simultaneously a God of wrath, but he's also a God of mercy. What Luther finally understood is that for the person who believes in Jesus as their Savior, when sin happens... Receive it from God yourself and give it to those around you. And all God's people said,